Hey, what's going on? My name is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment. And today I want to talk to you about a wedding that we did in Hood River this past weekend and the different challenges that this event created for us. So this is a hotel on the Columbia River in Hood River. And this is a very beautiful venue. This was the very first time um, doing a, an event here, but it created some challenges that I wanna talk about that could pertain to your events um, along with this one. So on one side of the hotel, we had the ceremony site. And now this is a blind walkthrough. So where we are set off is off to the side. And so we weren't able to see the people walking in. So we had to have some good communication with the planner and the venue to make sure that everything went off smoothly. This is also one of the most windy places in the whole state of Oregon. And lapel mics usually don't work too well outside, but because we use a digital mixer, we are able to EQ out all those harsh wind frequencies so that way our lapel microphones worked really really well out there and we were able to have the ceremony and the wind wasn't too much of an issue hannah my love what a journey has been in my engagement poem i wrote through ups and downs smiles and frowns you have been my rock today those words continue to ring truer than ever not only that, but we also had a grandfather that wanted to give a speech uh, halfway through the ceremony. So we really need to know when we're doing our ceremony consultation meeting, knowing how many microphones you need, what type of microphones, all the events that are going to happen for the ceremony. So that way we have uh, the full setup and all the equipment that we need to execute your event. Jeremy and Hannah, such a beautiful couple, such a beautiful ceremony. We are going to give you a blessing in Hebrew and English. So that was setup number one. From the ceremony, we went and did a cocktail hour. Now the cocktail hour was behind the hotel on a uh, asphalt or like a blacktop area. So we needed to have a second setup for the cocktail area so we could have all the guests go from the ceremony site down across the walkway into the cocktail and then we had music going instantly right after the ceremony is done. The cocktail hour lasted about 45 minutes. We had music going on down there and then we also had to have a dinner set up which was on the other side of the hotel. So we're on setup number three. Now for dinner, uh, we wanted to make sure that the music was going on at the end of cocktail. So that way when people left the cocktail area, they could go directly over to the dinner area. They could find their seat and we already had a setup over there and music going on during dinner. Now, once we had the dinner setup going on, I had my other setup guy start tearing down the ceremony site. So that way we're not tearing down equipment, trying to move equipment while your guests are in the area. So once everybody got over the dinner area, we got the ceremony site stuff teared down. And then we also tore down uh, the cocktail area setup. Um, so nobody saw any of that stuff going on. We could pack it away, get it out of the way when no guests are around. So for the dinner, we had dinner music going on. We were also dismissing the guest. Um, it was buffet style. So depending on the wedding and what we have going on, either the planner can dismiss people or we can go around to all the tables and dismiss all the guests. Once everybody got all their food for dinner, then we moved into toast and speeches where we had two wireless microphones so they could do all the toast and speeches from the head table. A beautiful family, so so loving and, and gracious and, and easygoing and kind and so fun to just hang out with. Once that is done, we went into the special dances where we had a dance floor out here in the dinner area. Once those are all done, the bride and groom went away to do sunset photos and then we transitioned inside to the hotel. 
um, this particular hotel wants music at a certain uh, DB level at about nine o'clock and this couple wanted to have a dance party till about 11 o'clock and so that's why they chose to move on to the inside now the inside created a couple challenges that is a very dark room and so we needed to bring in uh, some up lights to light up the room and it just totally changed the mood and the vibe of the room uh, with the up lights we used to do up lights about 80 to 90 percent of our weddings and it can really change the room i think they've got the nickname wedding lights um but by having this number set up which is this is setup number four uh that we had inside so that way we can continue the dance party till about 11 o'clock uh, we can bring up the volume and have a really good ending to the night so it is possible to have all these different setups in these different areas we just need to know about all the different challenges beforehand so then we can prepare when it comes to the wedding day. Because the last thing you want is somebody moving the ceremony set up to move it to the cocktail area, then to where the dinner's gonna be, and then where the dance floor is gonna be. Now, most weddings aren't this complicated. This is more of an extreme example, but usually we'll have like dinner outside and the reception and dance party is gonna be inside, or we have, uh, you know, ceremony is gonna be one area. It's gonna flip the room and be the reception, but cocktail is gonna be in a different location. And these are all things that that we can talk about and this will be um, a determining factor on the price and how much equipment we need to bring for your guys' wedding. My name is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment. If you guys have any more questions, don't hesitate to reach out.